Hey everybody, Ivan from Weights and Biases here. And in this video, I'd like to show you how Weights and Biases machine learning tools can help you competing and possibly winning on Kaggle. We'll go over three main points. The ability to plot and then interactively explore Kaggle datasets. How you can store different versions of your datasets and your models in the cloud as artifacts, as well as the good old classy WNB feature that lets you compare different runs of your model so that you can then pick the best one. As an example, in this video, we'll be using dataset from an ongoing read answer correctness competition that deals with lots of data about academic performance of students. And obviously, I'll leave the link to the kernel that I'll be using, so definitely feel free to follow along. As well as definitely feel free to check out the original kernel on which we based this weights and bias integration on by Andrada Altenio. We'll start off by authenticating into our weights and biases accounts to create a new project for this competition where we can begin logging those beautiful charts inside of a run that we name Exploration. Uh, let's just click on the first cell of code here to do so. And if you don't have an account, you can sign up by also clicking the cell. We can now open the project by clicking the project page link. Now picture this, you team up with a few friends to start working on a new competition. First thing you guys do, you explore the data. You look for outliers or imbalances in the dataset so that you can handle that during training. And one of the best ways to really get the feel for a dataset is to plot it. Well, now let's run the next two cells of code that will put on the data for this competition and read it using rapids. Executing that may take a minute or so. Now we can define a few functions that'll visualize our data using matplotlib and then actually do so by running the next cells. Well, here's the coolest thing ever. While these plots are just static images in the kernel, visualizing them and making them interactive using weights and biases is as simple as taking those matplotlib figures and passing them into wnb.log as well as just how we want to name the charts. If we now call wnb.run, we'll see our run in which we plotted the charts appear right in the cell output. Everything we plot using weights and biases gets synced in real time with our WNB project. Let's check out the project page. Well, look at this. We now have all of the Matplotlib charts we plotted in an interactive format. We can see the values at each point of the charts. We can scroll through them, resize the charts, enlarge each of the charts individually. We can zoom in just by highlighting the area and zoom out by double clicking, as well as enlarge the entire panel with our charts so all of them fit on screen. Now just think about it. We have all of the charts in the cloud in an interactive format, and not only can we get better insight from the data ourselves, we can easily share the WNB project with our Kaggle teammates and have fun doing that together. We can also add more charts at any point by calling wnb.log. Let's pre-process some data and log some more charts here. We can now see the new chart appear in our run that shows in this case how appearances affect the performance of the students. Now let's talk about a game changer feature when it comes to keeping track of your datasets and your models, weights and biases artifacts. Think of an artifact as of a folder of data to which we can add individual files and then upload that folder to the cloud as a part of our WNB project, which also supports versioning. Let's save our pre-processed training data as a pretty hefty uh, new train.parque file, which is 1.5 gigabytes. Weights and biases offer up to 100 gigabytes of free storage though, so we're calling that front. So we create a new artifact. Think of it as creating a new folder and specify the name uh, as well as the type. The type can really be anything as long as it helps you keep track of what the artifact is about. 
then we call artifact that add file to kind of like add a new file to our folder and wmb.log artifact to upload that folder to the cloud and it only takes seconds to do so for our 1.5 GB dataset. We can now go to our dashboard and see the artifacts tab appear. Uh, there we can click on the type of artifacts we added, in our case it's datasets, and then see the individual artifact itself. Uh, we can check out the overview data for it, as well as the actual files inside of our artifact. But here's where it gets really interesting. Notice the version 0 tag next to the name of our artifact. So if an artifact is like a folder with files, and we're trying to log a new folder with the same name and the same type, WNB will check if those folders have any differences, uh, like if we actually changed something, something in our files, and if we did, it will log the new folder as the newer version of the artifact. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, let's say I will go ahead and have our data set include just the first thousand elements, so that while the folder and the file we're trying to log will have the same name, the contents will be different. Uh, then we save the updated new train.parquet file and log it as an artifact in the same way that we did before. And there we have it, a new version of our artifact with the new files. This one is just 21 kilobytes, and we still have the access to the original dataset that's 1.5 gigabytes. So if I now go and delete the parquet file with the training data from the kernel and say that I want to download back the version 0 of our dataset file, I can just go and copy and paste the API for downloading the specific artifact that we want. You can imagine using this awesome feature to save time pre-processing your datasets each time by just downloading them in seconds, or to say version and keep track of your best performing models. But how do you know which of the many models you're training to score high on a competition are actually doing great? Well, now it's time to talk about how the trademark feature weights and biases can be of value to you, tracking your experiments. WNB gives you the ability to pull in the data into your dashboard about how your model is doing as those beautiful interactive charts, like plotting the accuracy or the loss during training. And doing so is as easy as adding a WNB callback to a framework of your choice. Uh, WNB.com slash getting started is great for, well, you know, getting started with this for the type of model that you are training. WNB especially shines when it comes to training neural networks, allowing you to keep track and experiment with training different architectures of your models or using different hyperparameters like batch size or number of epochs, and then seeing which combination of those leads to a lower loss and a better accuracy. A link to the WNB project that I'm showing on screen right now will also be in the description down below. In the case of the kernel, let me run a bunch of cells of code here and get to training the LightGBM model to demonstrate how tracking your experiments works. Here we perform k-fault cross-validation by training LGBM several times with the added WNB callback that pulls in the val accuracy data to our dashboard and plots it in real time so that one can you know, look at the charts and pick the best out of those models. Now, it's kinda hard to see the difference here, but remember, the charts are interactive, so we can go ahead and adjust the y-axis to start from 0.7, and we can also like zoom in, you know. Well, this model right there is clearly doing the best out of all the others. On Kaggle, famously, the tiniest of numbers can separate you from scoring a winning place in the leaderboard or not, so the ability, to, the ability to keep track of many different runs, of many different configurations of your models, they also get saved by the way to the run, is something that can really come in handy. 
So the ability to visually explore, interact and share the insight from the data, the ability to store and keep track of versions of your files as artifacts, and the ability to track your machine learning experiments are just a few out of many ways how weights and biases can be useful in climbing the slitter boards on Kaggle. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you'd like to play around with the kernel, or you'd like to integrate WNB into your model with the Get Started page, or join our Slack community of over 4,000 ML enthusiasts, links to all of those will be in the description down below. Uh, feel free to check it out. If you enjoyed this tutorial and are interested in object detection, you may also find useful the YOLO V5 uh, with WNB tutorial that I made, which should pop up on the screen somewhere. Uh, also, feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comments section down below and you know we really hope that you enjoyed this video